Yeah, yeah. What we're seeing here today is Pino Signoretto, who is without a doubt the greatest glass sculptor uh, of our time, perhaps of the whole 2,000 years of sort of glass forming history. Whatever, this guy is unbelievable. It's a glorious thing, you only get it a couple of times. One of the reasons that I can tell you that he's the greatest glass sculptor, technician, craftsman, artisan that exists, or maybe ever existed, is that if you look in any museum, from Murano to Corning to anywhere in the world, you will not see objects of this size and complexity. Here, Paolo. Back on. Okay. Two. Two. Okay, va bene adesso. Bello, bello. As important as the ability to be able to make this massive scale is also this unbelievable finesse that Pino has with his, with his hands and mind. It's sort of like the head, the hand, and the heart, and the gut, all working simultaneously. It's almost, a, a, he's almost not thinking, he's just moving. Look at the bump, eh? Le mio. Sta in fronte a te. Sta in Ok, adesso, adesso, now, Ponteo per i genocci. Ah, oh, you have it per Teo, che è bravo. Paolo, vieni, vieni col pisellino, piccolo pisellino. Il cane, il zio Tobia, ia, ia, oh. C'era il cane, wow, cane, wow. L'asinello, wow. Con il gatto, wow. What I'm doing here is, is a series of putti on animals, mostly riding animals, that they then go on a uh, stopper, and then afterwards we'll make big jugs, big vases that these go on top. So they'll end up being probably five feet high. using the torches back there. They're constantly using the torches to keep the piece the temperature they want because this is all about temperature. They're reheating the glory hole, they come back out. They work, come back out, the piece is hot and they work it. Then they add more glass, do some more work, and in the process, certain parts get colder, especially the thin parts. So what does he do? The people that are manning the torch come in and heat those parts up. Otherwise, presto, it breaks. And it often breaks when it goes okay, back stop, in and gets the shock gira, of the glory hole. Gira. And as you work with him, like gira, Amber, who's worked with him for a long time, they no begin to know what he wants to have hot. No troppo, che devo a who's ever manning that okay, torch, stop, that's stop. a very dangerous move. That torch stop, shoots out to, you know, 2,000 degrees for about six feet. So you have to be careful, just one, one brush of the hand and your hands burn, can be burned badly. It's very important who's around him running these torches. He has to feel confident and comfortable with the people on the torch. They play a very, very critical role in the making of this piece. Gira. Perhaps 
maybe is the best there ever was. Part of that is because Pino has his own factory in Murano, small factory where he's the head of the team, and he developed a lot of the equipment that it takes to make these things. This track you see here on the floor was a Pino invention. And you need this track and other tools like swivel yokes and things. You, you need all of these sort of simple mechanisms in order to handle this incredible weight. So if you put 80 pounds out on the end of a blowpipe, and they say for every foot it goes out, the weight doubles. So in a, you know, if it's out there six feet, it's kind of like a thousand pounds on the end. Now, how can somebody lift a thousand pounds? Uh, the reason is that you can lift it for a little while. The same way that people have been known to lift a car uh, if somebody's in an accident, or you'll see at the circus the strong man lifting a car with his feet for a short period of time. Yo! <laughs> It's not just the muscles. Muscles is only part of it. It's how the body moves, you know, it's how you how you lift, you know, lift something up and how you use your whole the strength of all your body. Besides needing Pino and his strength, you need what we call the pole turner, which is polydesoma. Poly is big, strong, tall, long arms, and he turns pole, you know extraordinarily. You'll see as this piece develops that Polly will take over on turning the pole, it's another word for blowpipe, and he'll often even use a second person to help him turn pole. Without that pole turner, there's no way that uh, Pino can make this. Now, I mean, to watch what you're gonna see here is never been done before. In fact, Pino told me yesterday when we made when we made the pooty on top of the rabbit, then with the dome underneath it, it was about 38 inches high, probably weighed 80 pounds. He told me when the piece was done that that was the most difficult thing he'd ever made. Nice, nice, very nice. Scala, nice. Everybody on the team is important. There's not a person out there who ha doesn't have to know exactly what they're doing. There's, what are we working with a team of about, oh, I don't know, it looks like about 10 people out there on this team. Now, at certain points, like you see right now, it's, it's building. We don't need everybody at this point. As the piece gets more complicated, parts start going together, we're gonna need everybody in on that team. And it'll be a whole different scene than the serene one behind me at the moment. But you'll see as many as three people working the torches as this piece comes to an end, and as many as three people turning the pole. And then in the meantime, somebody's getting, Rubino's working over there, getting the stopper part ready that has to be put on, and he needs an assistant. And we might be making up some more gold leaves and other parts that have to be added. So the more complex it gets, the more people you need. Now, this size of team, 10 people, uh, is kind of a nice size for this shop. That's bigger than most teams ever are. Most teams, like he would, his team in, in Murano would be maybe four people. But when it gets this complicated, you need 10, you need 12. Bye. No, no, così, quei pinsette. Dai. Via, vai, via, via, via. Via. I remember one day we had 17 people on the team. We might have had one or two more than we needed, but better you have one or two more than you need. Giù adesso, giù. Yeah, perfect. Oh! Hey! The money! The money! Scala! Okay. Qua, 
qua, qua. Qua. Ok, Paolo. Sì. Andiamo al caldo e dopo andiamo su. Eh. Via, 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 dai, andiamo. Go. Hey, Pat. Let's go. Via. Guarda, Paolo, ma lascia, lascia, Paolo, lascia. Lascia così. Sì, 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 lascia così. Open. Spingi Paolo, spingi. Tira, tira Paolo. Bravo. No, no, qua il scagno, scagno. Molto marcio, molto marcio. Gira in trio, gira in trio il ponteo, gira, oh! Mua, mua, via, via, via! That's why Seattle is an interesting city. Seattle is on the way up, New York is on the way down. San Francisco is on the way down, Seattle is on its way up. For me, I want to be where it's going up. Asia is going up, Europe is going down. Fresh pasta has eggs in it. Dry pasta has no eggs in it. Those are the difference. Fresh pasta is only good for a little while. Dry pasta is good for like a year. Most Italians prefer dry pasta. You know, you can buy it, but it's not a big deal like over here where people... And it also has eggs in it, so it's quite... This is only wheat, semolina wheat, nothing else. No other ingredient. And it comes from Sicily, and I had a hell of a time, get, you know, trying to find the source. It's like, once... Pardon? No, no, we got it out, we get it out of New York. I order about a hundred cases at a time. Remember that pasta? Yeah. yeah. I think it's terrific pasta. By the way, this is way overcooked. You know, I but it's good. one of the few pastas that's good overcooked. Ristorante Ciuli, perfetto. <laughs> they got a nine o'clock flight. So what do you say that we reconvene back here at six for a grand feast? And we'll cook it all in the hot tub. Yes, please. I would love to have it you know, approach this in some way that makes it easy to make the film work. We don't have to change the way we work for the film. This piece is going to be a fish, a white fish with gold scales, and black eyes, with a puti, the same, or puto, I should say, singular for puti. The puto will be riding the fish. We have an animal book here, and I looked, with the, I looked over the fish with Pino and said to him, what fish would you think we want to make today? I want a, I want a Pluto on a fish. Which one do you want to do? Which one? I said, I want him to be white, Bi Bianco. So something Bianco. I like it all, do to Bianco. But if we can make a make-believe fish, it doesn't have to be. But, Questo va bene, questo va bene. Facciamo questo, dai, va bene questo, qua bianco è perfetto. Somehow the, the putty just looks extraordinary in glass. You know, it looks good in, you know, traditionally they were done in wood or in plaster, and they were done, they were cast in metal. And of course they were used in paintings in Renaissance and earlier in the Baroque time. But somehow, that's the bottom of the, that's his, the Pudo's bottom, isn't it? Yeah, that's the, that's the butt. Then, but somehow out of glass, to me, the Pudi looks best out of glass. I don't know what it is. Maybe because you can see sort of through it. It's sort of, it's just, um, he's happier in glass. And that's what the Pudi, I don't even, you know, the Pudi was, um, not mischievous, but he made people, I say he because the, the pooty are always male, and they made people feel good, and they watched over you. 
No, I'm saying no. If I want this form, I want there's the shape I want now. Exact exactly this. I'm only drawing the, the bars. This this is the bar shape. Okay. Now in order to get this cylinder up here, up, we could we could work it on like we'd normally do, or we could attach it while we're blowing this, which ultimately would be the easiest to do because these are hard to make. I would think that to make it off the piece would be easier to do than to add it. Really? What do you think, Joey? Now he's going to probably get ready to cut in the in the legs. First, there he is. He's marking where the legs are going to be. Once, twice. He's also putting in the crack of the of the bottom at the same time, probably. There it is. There's the crack right there. So the you know the pooty's got to be, you know, he's got to be chubby. There's the crotch. There are the there are the legs where the legs meet. The, the stomach. Again, back in. He hasn't cut the legs yet, but he's gonna eventually, when he's ready, cut. Pushing in the thighs. Danny turns the pole. Paulie's now coming in to help Danny turn the pole. As this thing gets bigger, they'll get Paulie will begin to take over more in the pole. They'll use two of them on the pole as it gets heavier. In the meantime, Pino has instructed Pat to use the torch. He doesn't want to go in and heat it up in the glory hole. Now he wants to use the torch. Amber's getting ready to, with the punny. Pino's getting ready to cut the legs. We're going to punny it up first. A triple puntied piece. He's going to go back and forth about three times. So there you see he's moving the He's moving the punty, which is a word that means bridge. He's moving it, it's kind of the bridge between the piece and the metal. And he's moving it up and down to get more contact. wants to know if it's too soft or too stiff. When he gets ready, he's going to put a little water on the up here on the blowpipe and knock it off. Or should we say he's going to put a lot of water on it. So that water is just the right amount to make it break off in a lovely way. Now, now it starts to get heavy. Now it's out there on the blow on the on the punny. We're using a blowpipe for a punny. Now this is where it usually takes the longest reheat. Temperature in this glory hole is somewhere like around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's even hotter than the furnace. So they want it as hot as they can. So she's, Amber's getting the part that was the coldest, hottest first. It's also the thickest part. It takes the longest time to heat it up because that was the time that the glass was out the longest. This is the time that it has to be heated the longest. So we basically, at this point, I think we're gonna have ourselves a four-part piece. We're gonna have the head of the puto, which he makes first, then the animal, which he makes second, the body of the puto, which he makes third, and Rubino working on uh, the stopper part, which will go on last. I'll tell you what, they're so big, the time you got on the punny, I could make this entire form almost without tooling anything. All right, and they could do this beautiful form with almost, without a tool. Now, what I don't know, because I've never done, added two pieces together in that way, what I don't know is if somebody else makes me this cylinder, and they heat up the bottom, What's and they up? attach it, how it's, easy uh, it is to attach to the box. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, but I can open it up without any tools, almost. I mean, I know this shape can be made almost entirely without tools if I want. I'd use some tool, right. but it's a gravity shape. Right. Just naturally, you know, opening up this big 
Yeah, but I still say it's this shape is a lot easier to make than that shape. If it's one part, if it's one piece. When it's huge. And that will allow a place for it to fit onto the stopper. So it's, he's kneeling on this. It gives him a nice little platform. He probably will add more stuff to this platform. So he's going in, he's working it that the way he wanted it. He kind of pats, keeping the hands hot. As soon as he's ready, he'll tell Paulie to go back to the torches. Now he's going to go back into the glory hole. I mean, now we got. We got PJ and Joan working the doors, so we need two assistants just to work, just to work the doors. So you got two assistants here, you got Paula here. Takes three people to run this glory hole. Takes two people to run the torches. That's five. Pino makes six. Setting up gold, seven. Amber's getting the punny ready, eight. We'll get a three-person team over here getting the bottom ready. That's 11. Filmmakers make 13. You know, Italian vegetables. Not a ton, but enough. Did you get those little uh, baby summer squash? No. Like that. I never seen him serve that in Italy. Okay. You know, the, the um, you know, um, they love his, asparagus is always a winner. Okay. But be, by the way, when you make that asparagus, what do you put on the asparagus? What do I put on it? Yeah. I have the stuff just I make for you. Just, yeah. It's a. Um, just tell me what's in it. Lemon infused olive oil. Okay. That I have. It might just go straight olive oil. Okay. Sometimes I get tired of that lemon. Okay. And I'm not sure it refrigerates well. So uh, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Right. Don't put, don't put a lot of olive oil on anything. They can always add more. Right. So you're going to give me asparagus. Uh, spinach is great, but now maybe, maybe it's not decorative enough. But um, spinach is great. Beans are great. Uh, you know, they love to have peppers grilled. How are you doing, Brian? Uh, it might take a look at this. It might be better just to keep it like this rather than putting it on a booty. I think if he puts it on a booty, it's going to be really fragile and it may end up breaking because the fins are really I told him not to I know, do I this remember, fish. I just talked to Joey about that. I mean, look at it and see if it's going to withstand a booty anyway, in this dog. I cannot tell this guy what to do. He, he knows what I told him. I said it's going to be multiple fraudulent. Right? He said no. Well, but I mean, I, I can't. From my like, standpoint, it looks good. I know, but I can't contradict the master. Maybe, it would be, maybe yeah. you should just say, I love it like that. Just keep it. No. You gotta let him do what he's gonna do. Just so beautiful like that, it might be nice. I know, but once I give him the concept, I let him run. Just like Lino, he often would do something that I wouldn't want him to do, but I wouldn't stop it. Just too sweet. Even though they knew I didn't want to do it that way. You gotta give him some freedom. Yeah. Ooh. Beautiful. Okay, here we go now. One beautiful goldfish coming up. The stopper is behind me. Okay, here we go now. Here he goes now. So now he's got the goldfish on, it's hot. This becomes very tense here. This is a really difficult part. Now Paulie's weight has doubled. Now a little bit of water, boom, off it comes. Now Paulie's now Paulie's got to wrestle with that guy. It's very difficult. Get on Paulie's face. The, uh, so the, uh, let's let's back up a little bit. Get a wide shot. Let's get it going. There he goes. He's up on the yoke. Yes. Now he's going in. Now 
Now he's going off that yoke. It's really heavy now, and it's way out on the end. almost got burned there. Now he puts the hand up, he wraps the hand up on the head of the goldfish. One, that looks good, and two, that holds the fish in place. Extraordinary tail coming out of here. Keeping all the delicate, this has a lot of delicate parts. They're keeping all the delicate parts hot. Tino's going in to show them what part to heat up now. Nobody knows better than the master. Torches now are going full blast. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen people out here. He's going up on the yoke. He's on the yoke. This is very precarious now. He's going into the glory hole. The uh, into the 2,500 degree inferno. Pino's grabbed a hold of it now, wants to, wants to reheat it, wants to take it out of here. Cole, he comes out now. Yes. Whoa, the fin comes down below. Now we, here, now we come up, we lift it up. See, she said, down. Trying to get everything lined up. He knows he's got to put this stopper on here. Stopper, that's right. You make the stopper in the boss. Yeah, you make that first, and then you pull it on. Exactly right. Don't no, leave. Sorry, you make your you, stopper don't in your leave boss, me on that one. Then you, you stay go there, okay? What does he want to do? So that you watch the little foot. You guys can torch this toe right here. Stay on the torch. Go. Go. Got it? Yeah. <laughs> 